For this lesson, we'll be going over a transient analysis for RL circuits. Now, transient analysis is a circuit when switched from one condition to another, creating a transient period during the elements change from their formal state to their new state. And this is going to be for the first order circuits only. A very important fundamental of RL circuits is knowing how inductors function. Inductors in a DC circuit act as opens when they're uncharged. This is usually their initial condition. And inductors act as short in their steady state condition. This is usually when they're charged or current has flowed through them for at least five time constants. That's the time it takes for an inductor to be considered fully charged. And a time constant is L over R, or the Henry's over resistance. To find the transient response of an RL circuit, we're going to get familiarized with a few formulas. We have two charging formulas and three discharging formulas. And the idea would be to obtain an ideal model, which is seen to your right, which has one voltage source, one resistor, and one inductor. If you're able to take a circuit and bring it down to this Thevenin equivalent circuit, which has these particular elements, you can plug and chug this right into these formulas. Also, be aware when an inductor is fully charged, it acts as a current source. So be aware of this when we're doing later examples. To find the transient response of an RL circuit, we're going to follow four steps. One, we're going to find the ideal model, the Thevenin equivalent, which we talked about in the previous slide, which has one source, one resistor, and one inductor. Then we're going to find the steady state conditions, which is usually a voltage at the inductor at infinite time or over five time constants. Next, we're going to find the initial conditions, which is usually when there's no voltage or no current flowing, depending on what your conditions are. And then we're going to plug these values into our formula. Like we talked about, if you have the ideal model, you can plug and chug them right into your formula to obtain your answers. All right, we're going to start with an easy example to get our feet wet. So we're going to go through our steps, just like we talked about, and see if we can find the answers to these questions. All right, first we're going to determine our time for the steady state condition, then determine VL, our voltage at our inductor, after two time constants. All right, so let's go through our steps first. Find the ideal Thevenin model. Well, we already start off with it, just to keep it simple. One source, one resistor, one inductor. All right? Now it says find the steady state conditions. Well, looking at this right here, steady state condition. Now an inductor acts as a short when it's fully charged or after its steady state condition. Since an inductor acts as a short, we know there's no voltage between points A and B. So step two states, find the steady state condition. So the steady state condition of this inductor is it's going to act as a short. Like we talked about, once it's fully charged, it acts as a short, or basically a wire. So between points A and B, the inductor has zero volts when it's in a steady state condition. So for VL of infinite time, let's see if I can draw this halfway decent, it's going to equal zero volts because your 10K ohm resistor is eating up the 10 volt uh, power supply. And to find current at steady state, which is going to be IL at infinite time, it's very simple because since it acts as a short or a wire, all we do have to do is find total current, which is going to be 10 volts over 10k ohms, which is going to give us 1 milliamp. Okay, so that's going to be our current at infinite time, 1 milliamp with 0 volts. Step three states, find the initial state conditions. Now, as we talked about, when an inductor is uncharged, it acts as an open. Since that be the case, VL at zero time is gonna be 10 volts. Reason being is, since it can't complete the circuit, there's no current flowing through this 10K ohm resistor, which almost means it's not there or it's not applicable. So you're reading the 10 volts off the power supply. So at initial time, you have 10 volts right at this inductor. And that's again, if you had a meter at the split second you powered on that power supply, which would probably be in the, who knows, the microseconds. Next, IL at zero time. Again, since it acts as an open, there's going to be zero amps. And that's just that simple. So we have the steady state condition and the initial conditions. Step one says, determine the time for the steady state condition. Well, we have state and state conditions, but we need to know the time. So, that requires five time constants. And that's going to be five times, and that's L over R. 
that's going to come out to be 10 millihenries over 10 kilo, which is going to give us an answer of 1 microsecond, if you plug and chug this in your calculator. So one time constant equals 1 microsecond. Well, if you times that times 5, our steady state condition is going to be 5 microseconds. And that's our answer to number 1. Make sense? We we'll go to number 2. Find our inductor voltage after two time constants. Well, one time constant is one microsecond. So two time constants is going to be two times a time constant, which is two microseconds. So we should be able to plug and chug this right in our formula, which is our voltage at our inductor at two microseconds equals VL E to the negative time over time constant. So it's come out to be, see if I can simplify this down a little bit, equals 10 volts, because that power supply, E to the negative, and that's going to be 2 microseconds, because we talked about T equals 2 microseconds, over a time constant. Well, one time constant is 1 microsecond. And if we simplify that down, it's going to be a negative 2. So it's going to be equals 10 volts, E negative 2. 2. 2 microseconds over 1 microsecond equals 2. So we should be able to plug and chug this right in our calculator right here. It's going to come out to a final answer of 1.35 volts for VL. So after two time constants, it went from 10 volts all the way to 1.35 volts. So it's not fully charged, but it's almost acting as a short. It's not there yet, but it's pretty close. So right there, that would be our second answer for number 2. All right, let's go to a slightly harder problem. That way you have a better feel for how to do transient response. All right, for this example, we've got something that's a little bit bigger and a little trickier, but we're going to overcome it just the same with the same rules. All right, so to our left here, we have determine the time for steady state conditions, determine the voltage at the inductor and the current, and then after the switch has been closed for a while, open the switch and determine the voltage across the 6 ohm resistor. So this one has a few things we need to figure out, but let's go ahead and do our same steps we talked about earlier. So the first thing we're going to do is find the ideal Thevenin model, which is one source, one resistor, one inductor. I'm going to cheat real quick. There we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of our Thevenin rule. I'm going to try to find the Thevenin resistor. So to find this, I need to short our voltage sources and open our current sources. So I'm going to go ahead and cheat and short our voltage source. Pretty simple. So we have, we have 16 ohms in series with a 60 ohm resistor in parallel with a 40 ohm resistor. So it's going to come out to be 16 ohms plus 60 ohms in parallel with 40 ohms. And that's going to give us our resistor value for uh, our Thevenin model. If we plug and chug this in our calculator, it's going to give us an answer of 40 ohms put this off to the side right here. Let me go ahead and remove this model real quick. Now we need to find V Thevenin, which is that volt source right there. Well, part of the Thevenin model is we will go ahead and put an open between points A and B. So, now we need to find volts between points A and B. Well, since there's no current flowing through the 16 ohm resistor, that's not applicable, that's not even considered. So we need to find the voltage between this point and this point. It would be considered the same values at this point. We can do this by using our voltage divider rule, which is going to be 60 ohms over 40 ohms plus 60 ohms. And that's going to be multiplied by 300 volts. Again, this is not applicable. This is almost if you're looking at the circuit from this point of view, like this is not even here. Well, the voltage at 60 ohms plug and chug this in your calculator is going to be a 180 volts. Pretty simple. So, RV7 and put that off to the side there. I just want to make my model it's easy on me. Let me clean this up. Right here I have a very crude Thevenin model. We have 180 volt voltage source, 40 ohm resistor, and then of course our 10 millihenry inductor. So, step one is complete. Alright, 
Now we need to find our steady state conditions. So our steady state conditions for this one is at infinite time, or at least more than, or at least more than five time constants. Well, as we talked about earlier, an inductor acts as a short after steady state condition or after five time con constants. So your voltage at your inductor at infinite time is going to be zero volts. Because if it acts as a short, it's pretty much as if it was a normal wire. So between points A and B, it's going to be zero volts. Same thing as we talked about earlier. Next, the current at your inductor at infinite time is going to be just Ohm's law, because again, it's going to act as a wire. So it's going to be 80 volts over 40 ohms. It's going to give us 4.5 amps. So at infinite time, your current's going to be 4.5 amps. Handwriting looks a little, a little squishy today. Okay. So that one's done. Next, we need to find our initial conditions. Well, remember what we talked about earlier. First power on this voltage source and put a meter at this inductor, it's going to instantly act as an open. Since there's no current flowing through this resistor, and there's no voltage drop. Since there's no voltage drop, what, there's going to be 180 volts between points A and B. So your inductor voltage at zero time, initial condition, is going to be 180 volts. Okay. Now the initial condition for your current, it's going to be the opposite. Since there's no current flowing through it, since it acts as an open, it's also going to be zero amps. Because if it acts as an open, there's nowhere for it to flow, just like we talked about for the resistor. Okay, so now we have our initial conditions. So we found V of L and I of L. We have our state state conditions, our initial conditions. Now, three states, open the switch and determine the voltage across the 60 ohm resistor. We already fully charged this inductor. Now, when we talked about this, inductors act as current sources when they're fully charged. And obviously, we have the steady state condition of 4.5 amps. So, this inductor is acting as a current source at 4.5 amps. So, let's go ahead and redraw this so we can see how it looks. So, for this one, we have a current source going this direction, and it's going to be 4.5 amps going in this one loop right here. So it's going to keep going until it discharges, which is going to be very, almost instantaneous. But using transient analysis, we can determine what it's going to be. So we have 4.5 amps going through 60 ohm resistor. So using Ohm's law, very simple, 4.5 amps times 60 ohms is going to give us 270 volts. Now. Look at the polarity right here. That's one thing that will get you. If you had a meter between these two points, it's not going to give you 270 volts. It's going to give you an answer of negative 270 volts based on the polarity. Now, if I had a positive here and a negative there, that would have been different. But for this one, it's going to be negative 270 volts. I think that's enough information for us to be dangerous. Hopefully, you have a good day.